To get their party's presidential nomination, candidates ultimately need one thing, delegates. Mr. Chairman, delegates and my fellow citizens, I proudly accept your nomination. A delegate is someone, often a party insider or activist, who represents their community or state at these big party nominating conventions. One for Democrats and one for Republicans. A couple thousand delegates show up to each. Candidates earn delegates from getting votes in primaries and caucuses. So how are they divvied up? Democrats do it the same across the board. All statewide and district delegates are divided proportionally based on the election results. So if a candidate gets 60% of the vote in a state, they'll get about 60% of the delegates. But Republicans have a few different methods, proportional, especially in early states like in New Hampshire, or winner take all, where the candidate who gets the most votes gets all the delegates, like in Arizona. And then some states use a mix. The magic number is 1,215 delegates for Republican candidates to secure the nomination. If they don't lock in the majority of delegates ahead of time, it'll come down to the convention. Now, there are two main types of delegates. Democrats call them pledged and unpledged. Republicans call them bound and unbound. Basically, if a delegate is pledged or bound, they have to vote for a certain candidate at the convention based on how their state voted. But unpledged and unbound delegates can vote for any candidate. It's a small slice of the total delegates, but they could make a difference. Which brings us back to 1976. We came from behind in New Hampshire and we won. Through the Republican primaries and caucuses that year, incumbent President Gerald Ford didn't reach the magic number needed to lock up the nomination. A month before the convention, insurgent candidate Ronald Reagan trailed Ford by only 39 delegates, with 94 still uncommitted, which made the convention extra interesting. Ford ended up winning by about 100 delegates. I am honored by your nomination, and I accept it. Now this year, Nikki Haley's already trailing Donald Trump, with 17 delegates to Trump's 32. But over the last year, some state GOPs changed the system to favor a frontrunner, making the path to a nomination even harder for Haley. California's GOP, for example, adopted new rules ahead of this cycle. Any Republican candidate who wins more than half the vote there will get all the delegates. And California has 169 of them, more than any other state. What about the dozen delegates that Ron DeSantis and Vivek Ramaswamy secured in Iowa? The former candidates now backing Trump, but their delegates still need to support them on the first ballot of the convention. There is an exception, though, if there's just one Republican candidate left. Von Hilliard, NBC News. And NBC's Von Hilliard joins us now. All right, so Von, it seems like an uphill battle for, for Haley. So what do we know about why she's staying in at this point? And Tom, it absolutely is. And like it's outlined in there, Donald Trump would not become the actual nominee for the Republican Party until the middle of July when the Republican National Committee is going to be hosting this year's convention in Milwaukee. So for Nikki Haley, at this point, she's the only other serious competitor against Donald Trump. So even if she's able to rack up some delegates along the way and let's say, you know, Donald Trump, he potentially has criminal trials that are going to start before the convention as soon as March 4th. The, those trials could last three months. He could very well be found guilty of felony convictions before mm -hmm. that July convention. And they may be able and want to make the case that the Republican Party should turn to somebody like Nikki Haley that is not Donald Trump. And if she has some delegates already in the bank, well, she could make the best case that she's the next in line. But if the delegates are locked up, that becomes difficult, right? It becomes very difficult, but there is a situation at the convention where the full body of delegates could vote by a two-thirds uh, uh, share to upend the rules, and they could throw all of the previous rules aside, which would allow them to uh, potentially pick somebody not named Donald Trump. Of course, the difficult part for Nikki Haley is that so many of those delegates are Donald Trump loyalists, and they have already made the case that even if he is found guilty and potentially even in jail, they will still have his back no matter what, Tom. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.